welcome to this uh, webinar for the HR. This our future HR webinar on the multi-generational dynamic in workplace. Okay, so let's be talk with today. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself first. My name is Sahathorn Petrushai. I'm from from the HRX Thailand. The HRX is the media platform in Thailand, okay? and we have the content platform, we have the web bot platform, and we have the web directory to listen to all of HR product in Thailand. So for everyone who come to listen, uh, I want to know, and could you introduce yourself first? What's your name and what's your country? Okay? And if you have any question, you can submit the question in the Q&A section in this chat. Hmm? Okay. Welcome, welcome everyone. Kap. Today we talk about the how generation at work can impact our the HR job. Now we have the a lot of generation right now, right? We have the millennial generation, we have the generation C making up the big part of the workforce. Each generation has their own way to looking. Each generation has their own way for talking. Each generation has their own way of working. I think this bring the challenge and the great opportunity for the community. For today, we have the wonderful panelists from every country, including the top HR and company executive. We will share the insights how to handle the mix of generation at work. We will discuss about the how to attract and keep younger generation and how to adapt workplace for everyone. First, let me introduce our, our wonderful panelists today. The first is uh, we have Ms. Carol Chang, the General Manager of Corporation Affairs at Malayan Flower Mill Berhad. Welcome, Ms. Carol. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here. I'm Carol, the GM of Corporate Affairs, overseeing a corporate HR and corporate communications. I work for Malayan Flower Mill Berhad. In short, we call M. FM. MFM is a public risk company in Malaysia. We have a presence in Vietnam and Indonesia. And uh, MFM have three core businesses, flour milling, poultry integrations, and aquaculture. I personally in HR have 25, um, almost, uh, over 25 years of experience. And my personal passion actually is to add value to people's life. Thank you once again for having me here. Thank you, Ms. Carol. Yes. And the next one, we are honored to have Ms. Cheryl, uh, the Vice President HRS at SM Supermall. Welcome, Ms. Cheryl. Hi, thank you, Meng, and good morning to everyone. I am so pleased to be with you this morning, especially with our esteemed panel um, from different parts of, uh, of Asia. So I'm Cheryl, and I lead the HR division of SM Supermalls. We are the largest chain of malls in the Philippines, and we are part of SM Prime Group, uh, one of the largest Asian uh, property developers. And uh, we also have presence in China. And uh, this topic for today is very um, close to my heart because the generations unfolding really are uh, very interesting, the interplay. And I'd love to hear from the panel as well and questions from those who are participating in the webinar. So good morning. Welcome, Kam Mishiru. Yes, and the last but not least, we have Smith Thanks, the CHRO at Masan Group Corporation. Welcome, Kap, Ms. Tang. Thank you, Mings, and um, uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Tang. Uh, I, I am working as the um, Chief HR Officer for Masan Group, uh, which is the, one of the biggest uh, conglomerate uh, corporations in Vietnam. So uh, we have a, a big, it is a giant organization with about like six industries. So we are working on the different industry, including the retails, FMCG, telecoms, uh, F&B, uh, so you name it. So um, hopefully with like 35 years working experience uh, in the uh, multinational organizations and uh, one of the biggest, largest uh, local Vietnamese companies, um, I feel free to ask any questions and uh, I'm here for any kinds of uh, uh, concerns or is it a curious about HRs, about dynamic workforce planning. So thank you very much for having me today. 
Thank you, Kap, Miss Tang. Kap. For today, so we have the I'm the moderator as from the Thailand, and we have the panelists from Vietnam, Philippines, and Malaysia, and we have the all of audience across from the world, like the uh from the Malaysia, from the Singapore, from the Vietnam and Taiwan. Welcome everyone for this uh webinar. Okay, I think. Uh, I believe each panelist have the unique perspective and ton of of curious about the, managing the compact of multi generation of multi generation. So I think we are ready to gain valuable insight from this event. So let's get start the question. Okay, okay. For my first question, I know this. Uh, we talk about the multi generation in workspace. I want to know how critical it is for the organization to deal with the multi-generation dynamic talent in workplace. I think I can I could ask Ms. Sheryl, okay? How right. important and how critical for the organization to deal how with critical, yeah. it is okay. very critical. Um I see this really as a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for an organization right now to be able to harness the the interplay um, among the generations. Um, for instance, during the pandemic, our generation Z in our company was only at 5%. And then when we reopened um, and when we expanded the business once again, um, last year we ended at 25% of population as Gen Z. Beginning of this year, only you know um, a week into 2024, we are now at 30% Gen Z and 60% Gen Y. So, um, so there are already very young leaders uh, occupying critical positions also. So as I, as I mentioned, the interplay has to be able to give a voice to every generation um, to celebrate the differences as well as to complement um, uh, each other's um, uh, strengths and then to also work on the developmental areas of, of, of each generation. And so that's something which we uh, really need to focus on and I think also that um, the flip side is um, there's also um, an ongoing, you know, um, uh, experience among various uh, various companies uh, globally, not just here in the Philippines. But there is the concept of early attrition. If you're not, if you're not able to um, engage the younger generations in the first year that they're with the company, then that can be one of the biggest threats in the workforce. So that's, that's my view so far in the criticality of uh, of this topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Miss Carol, what do Miss Carol, what do you think about this? How critical is this for the organization? Yeah, um, to me, I agree with what uh, Cheryl was saying that it's rather very critical in our organization. We have um total eighty three percent of Gen Z and Gen Y in the total workforce, eighty three percent, and the rest actually is um uh, Gen X and Baby Boomer. So um, in MFM, actually, we have no choice to actually adopt a very robust strategy to attract, engage, and retain all these um, engine, I mean, employees for I mean, all generations. So it's very critical because like it or not, that actually um, the young generation is coming. You know, so uh, we cannot avoid that because we have to face um, all these, you know, in the digital era, your AI era, that we have to actually really actually equip ourselves for necessary uh, things that approach that you to attract and retain them. Yeah. Mm, okay. And Miss Tank, how many Gen Z in your organization and how critical is this for your organization? Uh, I think that just add into what Cherry and Carol says, um, to me that the important thing for the organization that is is the awareness of the older leader and the employee too. They have to understand, right? Uh, what the Gen X one, what the Gen Z one? I mean, we normally talk about millennium, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, right? Do we yeah. really understand what their needs look like? Of yeah. course, the millennium going to be different with Gen Z. So when you come from the awareness of the difference between the needs between the uh, the generation, you may have an idea. An example that if you have the one organization, you cannot fit everything in one, right? You have make sure that okay. Maybe you have to come with the multiple or flexible policy or whatever meeting with the different um, employee category. So mm -hmm. um, to me, the important thing that first of all, respect the difference 
The second thing is about try to make your organization agile as much as you can. Because um, one side cannot fit on everything. So that to me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You say every every generation have their own needs, right? And what is the your creative way, creative way in your organization to balance the employee of different generation for happy or the engaging in different multi generation? I give I give you a very very small example. Yeah. Uh, I think about a, a very big organization. Instead of having one system for the benefit, mm -hmm. right? They create the, the checklist, the benefit checklist. So they may have about like, okay, let's say you got the budget about like $1,000 per year. So but then you can have the multiple choice. Mm. Uh, you can have different kind of the benefit that you can pick and choose within uh, the sky of the, 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 the package. Instead of, okay, you have A, B, C, D, you may have the different choice and they can register from the beginning of the year. So that is very, very small example about how agile agility of your organization. Because an example, right, to me, millennials, they want to have the yeah, uh, basic work life. But Gen Z, they very much go for the entrepreneurship mindset. They are multiple tasking, right? So Gen Z, mm -hmm. now they really want to do many things at the same time. While Gen X, even Gen, Gen X like me or millennials like me, I don't want. I have, I, have, I have some kind of job skills for myself. So that, that and, and the, 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 the leader... The HR practitioner, when you have a such a JR organization or diverse organization, you have to think about the different ways of treating people. And to me, right, um, treating people the way that they want to be treated is more important than treating people the way that you want to be treated. So that is the difference. Wow, that's great. It's like the customized benefit that everyone can choose, right? Yeah. And because... if your organization is really the people-centric, you're going to have a lot of creative ideas. Mm -hmm. So, so Miss Carol, what do you think about? What is the innovative strategy or the creative way to balance the employee different generation? Thank you, Ming. Um, for, at MFM, we built our strategy around the ESG. ESG yes. actually is a concern for young generation. So um, at MFM level, that all the ESG issues that we address at the board level, so we have to, um, no choice, we have to, I think, in, in, in order to survive in this um, um, situation that everyone must be actually operate in an environmental friendly approach. Okay, uh, in MFM, we, um, not only that, we demonstrate, but actually we operate a state-of-the-art branding plants with zero waste. We also find ways to actually um, reduce the carbon emission. Okay, mm. we also uphold uh, human rights. And also, code of conduct is a guiding principle for all. And also, um, not only that, we also um, prioritize that on the um, uh, physical well-being and mental well-being. So um, um, that is a close to my heart for mental well-being. So therefore, I launched the Caring and Connected um, program, partnership with local university that actually having the free counseling to our employees. During pandemic, we even extend this uh, benefit to the uh, family members. And we can see, we can see tremendous uh, effort putting there and uh, benefit actually out of it. And the mental health actually is an issue after the post pandemic, like it or not, we had to face it. And um, we really put a lot of effort actually putting it. Why actually I actually put this actually is close to my heart to actually, at least different news that actually during um, pandemic, there's one uh, um, sole breadwinner uh, winners that have three children that he lost his jobs that he couldn't actually uh, afford. So the wife, being a full-time housewife, went out to work as a part-time cleaner. So after six months being jobless, she couldn't take it. And uh, one day he drove uh, together with three children, reached in a highway, he threw himself and the three children and died on the spot. That actually the wake-up call to me as a HR practitioner, how can we actually address this mental health issue? So I actually wrote this about two to three years I see a lot of benefit of that. Not only that, um, mm. uh, that actually is a soft part of it. Uh, of the design, actually, we had to make sure that um, there is a pros and cons for both open concept and traditional concepts. You know, so in MFM we embrace a hybrid uh, office uh, design. Where else that we have open concept to all employees, 
and we also have officers for the leadership team. With this, actually, we actually incorporate, offer better corporations, reduce the power distance, at the same time also um, offer necessary privacy for the leadership team. And not only that, uh, do their buzzword actually is AI, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. You like it or not, you have yeah. to embed the AI in your workplace. So at uh, MFM, actually, we have actually um, uh, incorporate AI, big data, um, machine learning in our workplace. Uh, we even have the software actually have a similar function like chat GPT, that you have some problem, you ask chat GPT, they give some answer. I will say potential answer to you. And youngster actually feel energetic. They say, hey, um, it's not something that actually we can learn. At the same time, also can experience it with the real software that we're having it. I agree with uh, uh, Tang say, uh, practice benefit. You cannot have mm -hmm. one size fits all benefit. Uh, you might have a very fantastic medical coverage for your immediate son, uh, ch uh, children. But uh, the single generations, they say, what's it in for me? I don't have a spouse, I don't have children, but you extend it to, to, to them, it's not relevant to me. So if you extend it well for single, I cover your parents. Say, wow, something actually in it for me. So therefore, we had to really look at the policy for all generations. The actually keyword actually is fairness. You have to be fair for all generations. And one, one part you have to cut equally to actually taking care of all. So with that, I think you'll be actually good to actually to attract return at the same time, actually engage the all generations. Yeah, fairness for everyone to make them happy and engagement. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Ms. Cheryl, for the SM Super Mall, do you have any other creative way in your organization to yeah. make every different generation happy? So um, I resonate with what has been shared so far um, uh, by our panelists. Um, uh, in terms of um, fairness and all that, um, we view it here in SSO for Malls. We have an approach that is holistic. Um, we want to veer away from a fragmented view of the generations. We have to be able to approach them across the various um, stages of their uh, experience um, mm -hmm. from the time that they get to know the company, join us, etc. They grow and all that. And one of the key points, especially when we're dealing with almost 90% generations Y and Z um, in their organization, is the learning and development. So I'd like to focus on that a little bit more. Um, uh, starting last year, we really ramped up um, a, a view on a skills-based approach. It's when you bring in people who may not be, you know, 90% ready for the job. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be able to find people with potential. Maybe they are just at 75% fit to the role when we hire them. How do we make them really uh, ready while you know, adjusting to the new company. So we have to be able to break down the job into bite size or skills, which they need to be able to take to, to, uh, to address through various skills learning programs. And by doing that, we have to strengthen onboarding so we can strengthen the um, retention as they stay in our company. So skills-based approach is really making sure that we're not just, um, uh, confining ourselves to uh, considering people for jobs that they've already done before. We'd like to look into this young generations who may have the aptitude, but we have to be able to pave the way for them. And therefore, um, the, the curriculum, the functional academies, and the, the various ways on the job um, learning, uh, digital learning, and the AI also, because we have to be able to uh, give them the programs that they want based on their preferences. It's also all factored in, and um, we're we're we've launched that last year as a holistic program and learning, and for this year we're gonna make it even stronger. And then, how do we create also the interplay of communication across the generations? Because we've been focusing really on coaching and mentoring, and uh, we've made it a part of the KPIs of the leaders that they have to really be able to find time because we're also busy, right? Very very busy, but we have to be able to make time. Show them you care. Show them we have time for them, and that they have a voice, and we can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, have the coaching and coachy in organization, right? Yes, the coaching is a yeah. part. 
Okay, so I I I I have question for Miss Tank about the flexible flexible benefits. What is the challenge of it? Because we have the a lot of generation. How flexible benefits have the challenge? What's the challenge of it? Well, I think the challenge that you may deliver uh, the 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 group of the benefit is not cover everything, like right. But if you don't yeah, yeah. you don't start, you will never have the experience. So to me, that first of all, that you dare to do that or not. Or the second thing that uh, don't think that whenever you deliver from the first phase, it's going to be the perfect one. You learn all the way. And then that is a challenge. Challenge that people say, oh, I'm not sure that if you deliver, I mean, if you um, uh, give it to the to the, to the the employees, uh, we will have the against from them. I mean, they have a the, lot of questions. And people say, ah, that is more. But I don't think so, right? Um, it's very much depend. If you really think that employee uh, is the central or of everything you do, uh, I don't see any problem with that. But I really want to to add into what uh, Cherry and Karen says about the workforce at the moment and the trending and what you're supposed to do. If you look at the the world right now, right? Uh, hmm. And then you read some kind of the data, they say that eighty seven percent of the company um, said that. A technology adaptation will still be the key driver for upcoming year. And um, uh, Cherry also mentioned about a skill, um, skill, skill, skill set, right? A skill set by hiring and development. And I agree too. So with 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 my company, uh, and with Masan, right? Instead of I have the fixed job, this will also change. Instead, and I think that this really work. Instead of you have the fixed job, fixed title. And then you start, go and look for the talent. I'd rather to see somebody who are doing that job. Uh, but maybe when you talk to them, you interview them, you will find out some very, 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 very good skill or even the new skill set that you never have in the organization. And that could be help you to foster the organization. I still bring them in and design some job for them to do in order to maximize their values and their capability, right? So Cherry also and Cherry and Karen also mentioned about the uh, uh, generative AIs uh, in the organization. So I think if you think a little bit deeper and further, that's gonna be you have to you have to believe and you have to think that the AIs gonna be being a part of your workforce planning. So an mm -hmm. example, right? If you go to the uh, to the mall supermarket, you don't see many cashier anymore. You may see half of it and half of the, when you check out right from the counter, half of it will use the, the machine. Like, mm -hmm. Walmart, they also apply the same target. I went to US, they also doing the same. So which means that half of your workforce before in the cashier going to be automatic, erased, or eliminated. So, then you need to consider, so in the same with the data analysis, with the same with the finance, even with same with the, 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 the factory, you have to think and you have to consider that the technology is going to be a part of your workforce. So the important become the productivity of the employee. So, I mean, there's so many things happening now uh, uh, with the different gen, with the different generations and with the different expectations. So the important thing that as a practitioner leader, we need to believe uh, that could be a part of your uh, strategy. So I just want to add it. So or maybe that is not about your question only, but but I want to add. <laughs> but it's okay. It. It's okay because the AI very impact mm. uh, impact the workforce so much. But I think if we talk about the AI or, or technology, we will have the another section. Yeah, <laughs> we have true. the more than one hour yeah, something like but that. Yeah, but it's overall, so right? Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And get employee too, right? Uh, Yes. So big employees should be a part of yep. the, the workforce planning because some of them they, they they don't want to do one job but but they are really good so how you how you open and accept the gig employee to be a part of your workforce too so that is the next generation wants okay so guess back for the new generation of employee uh, I want to ask Mr. Tang again uh, do you think the new generation of employee will disrupt the workplace harmony in current workplace? I don't think so. If somebody think, uh, I think if, if somebody raised that question, I think the first question, uh, I mean, we have to ask, have we done anything or mm. did we do something wrong? 
uh, about it. So that's why it's become uh, big corruption, right? To me, that's um, well prepared and being open and make sure that the different generation, they have the different needs and you prepare for that. So culture also, cultures and the value of the organization also play a very important part to make sure that you find a fit employee and then you deliver and you give them the right place to work to maximize their capability. So I normally I, I normally ask myself, have I done a good job yet? So that's my opinion. So I mean, feel free to add in, uh, my friend. <laughs> Everyone wants to ask some opinions about it. Uh, I think I can add on. And actually, sure. uh, to me, disruption is rather have a negative meaning. I will feel that the young generation actually they bring fresh energy. You know, they uh, bring in new perspective. You know, it's a new blood to the organization. Actually, we welcome them. You know. So I, I think that actually with new energy, the fresh energy, that actually we do things not as usual, okay? And um, we have to actually think different way actually to address the issue at hand, you know? So that is where come with improvement and continuous improvement, you know? A young generation, they have a different, different ideas, you know? So all this um, innovation or whatever come with crazy ideas. So they're full of energy, full of ideas, we should leverage on their strength to actually implement something that um, um I would feel that every product actually come with crazy ideas. But you like it a lot, if you actually do a survey on all the generation, they will come up different different of crazy ideas for you that you work on. So if you want to product innovations, you have branding, the youngster actually done it well because they can tell you something that you say, hey, crazy, but actually they can really make it and change the world. And so they believe in this, that they have a really high confidence in themselves because they are nothing to lose that uh, with their generation um, being actually brought up uh, with technology savvy, they know everything actually they want instant. They want instant means that they want things that actually within a minute, they, they will think it's too, too long. So with that, actually, they bring different trends for the products and, and, and people's needs. So I, I feel that actually I welcome them because um, uh, amazingly that um, otherwise that the human will not actually evolve. We were actually still um uh, having the same platform. With that, actually, I I, I actually I actually really um desire to see what is the world in the next uh, 10 to 20 years with all this new blood coming in. How can we catch our practitioner to equip ourselves to actually gather and actually uh, provide the platform for them to nurture them, you know, actually uh, don't kill the idea, but welcome it, embrace it and work together. Yeah. And to add on to that, just a, a few items. Um Welcoming new generation is not a new thing. I remember when I was very young in the workforce, around 20 years ago, <laughs> um, <laughs> we were just defining Generation X, you know? Mm -hmm. And then Gen came in Generation Y. Mm -hmm. and it felt like, you know, Gen Y was so different. But then if you look at it, we're able to really unify and, and, and synergize at the right points. And now comes in Generation Z. And some people are saying, <laughs> there seems to be a lack of resilience and all that. But we say, um, what have we done in the various generations to be able to really help this, this youngest generation now in the workforce to be able to understand what the company needs, where they, where they are in the whole you know, spectrum of things? Because as what Carol has mentioned, there is a way to be able to find you know, the strengths of each one. And then very mm -hmm. soon, the generations alpha will come in. And I have a seven-year-old kid. He's from a generation alpha. And he's also very different from the Gen Z. Mm -hmm have to be able to find that way of being um, welcoming and adaptable and really making sure that there's a place for everyone uh, to have a voice and to be able to have a conversation flowing in order for the differences to be really bridged because we really love diversity and inclusion now right and more so as we celebrate more and more um, generations because they will keep on coming so we have to be able to find a sustainable way to, to adjust very quickly to these different types of uh, generations. Yeah, I, I want to dig deep of this question. Everyone say the company can use the strength of the each generation, right? So could you give the example or give a detail about this? Michelle, Ryu, you can. Yeah, um, I can focus on communication because um, I've seen that for the most part, there seems to be a need for the various generations to understand where each other is coming from. 
And mm -hmm. uh, specific to um, communication, you have, for me, there are two things. There's style, and then there are the formats. Um, for the Generation Z in particular, because that's what we are, are focusing a bit more now, is that communication has to be very clear, very mm -hmm. explicit. Mm -hmm. um, some of the uh, real life uh, situations uh, I found myself counseling some leaders in is when the leaders would say, you should have known that by now. But then, you know, um, uh, this is a young person coming in with very different background and very different um, experience. So you have to be very explicit with what you would like uh, the person to do. And also to be very data-driven. Um, the younger generation now, more than ever, we really love numbers. They want to be able to uh, to say, if you're saying this as your stand, okay, what's the data to support it? Okay, so, and that's the, the other one is also when it comes to format. Um, you have to be able to cater to a lot of different um, tastes. So nowadays you have um, the full blown. So we have a full blown, for instance, deck. Then we have um, we have uh, the bite size formats. We have huddle formats, and then we even have you know um, I'm asking my team to really focus on the eight seconds, twelve seconds, really bite sized informational um, uh, cascade um, for us to be able to to uh, compete with the various, you know, um, various interesting things that are in the, in the attention of, uh, of the younger generations. Yeah, communication is a key, right? Very much. Ms. Carol, do you think yeah. you agree in with that? Last time actually, um, we actually find success in the project. So uh, uh, what we do, actually, we appoint the young generation as a project lead, okay? Then we empower them to actually recruit their, mem uh, their committee members. So, and uh, where else the older generation work as a coach and mentor to that, you know? So, and with that, actually, in order to make this work, actually, there are three keywords that are actually there. Empowerment, trust, and share accountability across the generations. So, with that project, actually, everybody pay, play a part of it. So, you will get the best of each and every one of the generations. So, that actually, they will feel that, hey, actually, I'm not alone. When I'm doing it, my coach at the back they will show the same KPI, joy KPI. Mm -hmm. So if I screw up, they're also the same. If I start it, they're also together. So that actually is a huge impact. So uh, each and every project, we were actually doing that way. And of course, um, they have a long term. term. I feel that because our young generation, they are more tech savvy and lack of patience and they want mm -hmm. fast. So uh, maybe you can assign them to short term, to certain extent, medium term. Whereas for um, older generations, um, um, you might actually involve them in the long-term um, uh, strategy or program. For instance, that you want to actually penetrate a new market, you want to do a um, major acquisition, some older generation can bring to the table the experience and skill. Whereas young generation can do something like very quick for data research, uh, leverage on the Googles and other things that actually make the project is very um, uh, viable. You know? Or you want to actually launch a product that you might actually not only assign to youngster, they might actually give you another lot of ideas might not feasible. So older generation can give some coach. So we can have to clearly define what is the role of responsible as a project lead, what's the role of responsible as a project sponsor, what's the role as a um, as a coach. You know, as a coach, you might not involve the decision making, but you can give some advice to them. So with that, I feel that actually this project-based actually approach is quite um, feasible. And uh, so far, it's working well in our organization. So we might be able to actually share and learn uh, something together. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we have communication from the Mr. Ryu and Empower from the Carol. The last one, Ms. Tang, what do you think how company use the strength of each generation? I think um, what Cherry and Carol mentioned is all correct, right? It all, every must cover. I, I would like to add in one more thing is um, create the feeling of inclusion for them. A lot of people, a lot of people feel that I am confusing between engagement and inclusion, right? And to me, this is different. See, same, same, but different because inclusion is very much about uh, feeling belonging. And you know that with Gen, Gen Z, right? Uh, um, they are very, very much uh, quick, fast, tech savvy, multiple tasking, uh, and 
the engagement people normally complain, oh, they are young, they're going to move very fast. Look at their CV every two years or three years, they move. And they don't, and sometimes we don't understand why. And people, they own the basic need about food, about secures, about being values. And I think uh, there's no exception, right? Create the feeling of uh, inclusion. In they, they normally say inclus inclusion and diversity, but I, I pick the inclusion. They feel that they are belonging to the organization. They feel that, yeah, whenever they say, even the being the project leader, project member, their voice are being heard, right? So, and and being recognized by what they deliver. And to me, that um, is not easy to do, but it's not so difficult. As long as you understand and uh, you're giving out. So I just want to add in one, one, one more thing. It's about creating the feeling of belonging. Inclusion. inclusion. Belonging and inclusion, right? Uh, yeah, belonging, being the, heard, the well recognized. Of... Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Inclusion, yeah. Okay, so uh, I want to know more. What is the opportunity of the multi-generation in the workplace? I would ask Miss Tang again. The opportunity. Are, are you talking about career, career opportunity or I mean what? <laughs> okay, opportunity in the organization. Yeah. Okay, I turn, I mean, to be honest, right? I'm gonna turn the, the, the question in another way. So I'm gonna ask, in order to have the opportunity, right? They need to really have an opportunity first. So you're normally talking mm -hmm. about succession planning or whatever. But then people say, oh, yeah, if I have the success on planning, so do I have to, to leave my role and then release the job for the next generation or not? Or I'm losing my job. So the manager is normally afraid of that, right? But I think that um, if, if you want to create the opportunity, then you have to understand and exactly buy in the let go concept. So which means that when you reach a certain level, right, you want to build the next generation. And the leader have to understand why we have to create the opportunity for the next generation and accept that is the reality. Because to me, right, it, it's not about a promotion. It's not about the uh, opportunity. doesn't mean that you have the promotion in the organization. Opportunity is mean that you have the, the opportunity to learn the new skill set you have the opportunity to learn about the different kind of the skill, to learn about the business, and to do something even different with what you are doing today or doing some additional thing with what you are doing today. To me, the opportunity mm -hmm. is there, but how to, sorry, how to create the opportunity and how to give the people the opportunity, that is very important. And go back to the organization questions, to the listener, to the own leadership team and to the highest manager in the organization. Yeah, yeah. I, I asked, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I asked this question because now we have the millennials and Gen Z come into our organization, right? So I want to know what is the opportunity to use them stretch, something like that. So uh Ms. Carol, can you add can you yeah, um, ask some yeah, opportunities? I would like to understand the question a bit. Uh, is, are you actually saying that the opportunity they offer to the company or what opportunity you offer to the um, new generation? So uh, maybe for the company, company to use that. Uh, what opportunity company offer to them or what opportunity they offer to the company? What is your question? What the young generation offer to the company? Ah, yes. okay, good. Okay. Um, I love a young generation, like I said, that they are very vibrant, they are very energetic, they, they are actually, they dare to dream, and they dream big, and they are actually believe that they can achieve that. So, um, in a way, that actually, we can leverage on their strength. The opportunity brings to a company, actually, we have to sometimes have to see examine our risk appetite. So, uh, sometimes, old generation are rather cautious. Um, they do not take too much of uh, um, risk when actually venture to the new uh, area or new market, you know, where all the young generation can offer to organizations to actually bring in the new ideas, new energy, new perspective, and they know that what is the world in future. So whatever that we build, whatever that we serve, whether you're in the manufacturing or your financial 
you know that actually you serve not only the current generation, you also serve the future current uh, future generation. So from this youngster, they can bring you some different perspective. They will share with you how they are think, how they actually value, what is their value, how actually things that actually uh, matter the most to them. And where else actually, in a way, there actually is a, is a pause and reflection for the older generations to say that, um, I, I like the way that Cheryl said that it, it's coming. Um, the, when I start working on the young generation to the workplace, you know, people say, hey, hi, uh, young lady, what can you bring on the table? But today when I look back, actually, I say the same thing to the youngster, you know. So Cheryl says seven years old son. Uh, I still remember when my son, I, I put them in the international school, she in the year seven. So I want to change school. Um, normally at our generation, when parents say it's an, it's an instruction, it's an order, we just follow. But my son said, no, mom, you give me one week. Let me think about it, whether I want to change school or not. So I, I hold it. I said, hey, I'm paying your school fee. I had to listen to you. You know, something is, you know, so I paused and said, okay, let, let's see what happened after a week. But um, surprisingly, at the age of 13, he came back with analysis, you know, why he don't want to change school. So give a stance of reason. At my generation, we just absorb, you know. To that generation, you have to rationalize with them. You have to tell them why. And they will tell you why not, you know. And they will come to conclusion, okay, this is a joint decision we make. Come to workplace, Gen Y, Gen Z equal. They will say that I want to be inclusive, okay. I want to be part of the decision-making team. I want to be involved. I want my voice to be heard. Do you value me? And do you actually provide support for me to grow? What system do you have? What um, uh, resources do you have? What is the limited uh, thing? What else I can do? What else I can contribute? Um, what other things that actually organizations can offer to me? So all these actually a uh, youngster can bring it. So we have to embrace it because we know that you recruit not only generation um, uh, for this generation, you are also recruiting for the generation for the future. So you have to actually know their mindset. I feel that the opportunity they, they, they offer to our organization is a tremendous. The AI actually really changed, you know. So, and um, when I seen that actually, um, I think about five years ago, then um, the start school using the virtual teaching, you know. They're using, wow, we say, wow, so, so, so different. So, no longer using PowerPoint presentation. So, we have to actually know that actually all these is the ones technology play a part and they offer and they find the solution just very quick. Not mm -hmm. us, actually, when the moment you do a feasibility study, whether you want to buy a piece of land or a uh, 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 they already done it that is yesterday. That is gone. So you have to work it fast. Even the coffee machine, you want to make a cup of coffee, and you thought within a minute, it's very fast. To them, no. It's just the one within a second. So you know the world is changing. You know? So you only know world is changing, how you actually address it. You have to actually adapt on the mind. Young generation, they have plenty to offer. So you have to embrace them and be part of the team, include them in each and every process. That actually is key to success for the next 10 to 20 years. Okay. That is my take. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe it's the last question for me. So uh, for the audience uh, who have the question, you can submit the question to our opponent list by the QA button at the below this, right? And okay, this is my last question. Uh, may I ask Ms. Cheryl? Uh huh. Uh, okay, I want everything we talk about. So I want you to wrap up the one thing. What is the key factor to attract the Gen Z or the millennial in the workplace? Just one thing, just one key question. Oh, one thing. Okay. Um, I think that for me, it is about the the sense of purpose um mm -hmm. this generation sense of purpose is very important across all generations but with this younger generation as they look at sustainability more closely um they question uh uh the ways of working on whether the company is doing things which would benefit um the the generations to come that sense of uh, continuity and and so it really helps um, all the generations in the workforce to be on their toes to always look at new ways of doing things but to always anchor on 
what's important for um for this business in terms of the communities we serve and 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 that's very important in terms of um communicating sense of inclusion you know uh, making them prepared and all that but at the heart of it we have to make sure that they understand why we do the things we do and then we can actually engage them more so i think we have to include that in the whole discussion um so far okay so we will go to the q a session for the our audience i will pick up some question to ask we will have around the five or six minutes okay this question okay uh i like this question can you provide the specific example of strategy and the best practice that will be discussed during section provide a specific specific example or strategy mm, or best practice who will we answer that can you ask the question again the question is sorry can you provide specific example of strategy and the best practice that will be discussed during this section discuss about the how to make the different generation work well together, something like that, I think. I think I could take this question, but um, to decide the strategic, uh, strategy, I mean, strategy, right? You're talking about the strategy, right? I don't think it's simple, right? I, I would like to go with the, with the process like this, okay? In order to have the, uh, you normally have the two, two strategy, when they come to the organization, first of all, you have the business strategy. Am I am I correct? Am I answer in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the uh, go to the to the question because strategy have the different type of strategy. So you have the business strategy, or you have the uh, people strategy. So uh, are you talking about the people strategy or are you talking about the business strategy? Mm -hmm. So the question because I can go to the very specific answer now. So. If I look at the question he asked, can you provide specific example or strategy or best practices that we discuss? That means uh, what kind of strategies that we use it when we discuss it as a panel three of us. Uh, the one of the example that we are actually uh, uh, yeah, it's not certain to be that way. Correct, uh, uh, Min? Uh, I think he asked um, uh, the current strategy that we are implementing. I... Yes. Okay. Maybe, maybe you go to another question, I think. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Confuse the panelists, I think. Okay, okay, it's okay. Uh, let me see. For, for, for me, actually, I can answer it. A specific question strategy I use actually is for using ESG. I know uh -huh. that is a concern for young generation. You know, United Nations, they're saying that please protect our mother nature, uh, global warming, you know. So um, the specific questions, uh, specific example I can use is ESG. And we address this at the board level. We actually make sure that each and every things that we do, we will not harm the mother nature. That actually will actually um, attract, um, uh, it's a concern, you know, for the young generation. So with uh, doing this um, uh, process, that definitely we involve everybody. You know, everybody have their different mind, different um, bring their different perspective to the table. We listen and then we drop up with the policy. We know what, what policy, we cannot actually uh, cater all, at least we can actually uh, cater the majority. So ESG is the way to go that actually um, uh, with the global warming, uh, youngsters like, um, uh, uh, like it because they are the main concern. And uh, old generation know that actually they are not only worried for their children, they are worried for their grandchildren. So with that, actually, you can make it as a project to actually make everybody actually work together. That you can create a harmonize between the workforce for all generations. Mm. That's my, my, my pick. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, I will go to the next question. Okay, this question is talk about the remote working. Yeah, it's right. The remote working is the seem be the trend right now, right? So how do we maintain the employee engagement while excuse about the remote working today? Did I can uh, thank you? Yeah, I used to. Uh, I volunteered to answer. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I used I used to work for CarQ um, as a uh, regional HR director for the South Asia, and uh, during the uh, pandemic, uh, we applied the um, uh, 
uh, remote working, right? And then hybrid work and, and you name it. And normally, uh, this works very, very well in U.S., to be honest, due to the, um, I mean, due to the nature of the country, due to the independence of the individual people in the different kind of thinking. But uh, it doesn't really work well uh, in Asia. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but uh, especially in Vietnam at that time when they were sitting in Vietnam. Uh, and to me, that uh, the only way that we did it last time that we have a lot of activity to create the engagement. Because people, they normally want to, uh, everybody wants to do a good job, of course, right? Uh, and at the same time, that they also want to uh, to have their own personal life. So we change the concept from uh, work-life balance to be a work-life integration. Okay. So you, you, you understand what I mean, right? Now people don't talk about work-life balance, we talk about work-life integration. So we have the different forum. Uh, with the, we appoint the people, we take the responsibility. We have the projects team. Uh, that people work together uh, in the factory. We normally have the different kind of activity that we make sure that we engage people. Uh, at the same time that when we do the meeting, we do that online, but at the same time, we require people to be on time to deliver based on. At that time, performance KPI and uh, performance checking is very important. Very important. We have a lot of activity online. We have the culture section online. We have the um, town hall uh, activity that we try to engage people uh, as much as they can. And, uh, uh, and, and we promote the concept of, um, uh, it's again, uh, work-life integration. We understand that, we accept that fact, uh, and we think that is the new trends of way of working. The remote, uh, the remote, and then we define very clearly, we have the policy that we define what kind of job you can work remote and what kind of job that you cannot work remote? Like an example, like the people work with the front lines, they cannot work remote. But as several jobs like the technology job, the finance analysis, uh, you can always do that. Uh, but at the same time, there's several activity that the, the line manager have to be engaged, have to engage with the employee, uh, with different kind of the town hall meeting, uh, and um, uh, how to say. Um, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier that there's so many activity town hall and and then working at the factories, uh, we gather alone together. But to me, to be honest with you, it's it's not that easy, and it depends on the uh, on the country that you are based in, and the nature of the business. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Liu. About the SMR, do you have any as why for the maintain employee engagement? I'm really curious about the details and so how. Yeah, yeah, I want to know. Um, in terms of remote work, it's something that we cannot offer to the majority of our employees. So mm -hmm. uh, the challenge there, especially during the pandemic time, was um, to compete with other employers who are offering this while we have to be able to entice the younger generations, especially, to, to still be working on site. Um, but uh, even now, uh, we do have only a few um, a small percentage of the population which is uh, on remote work half of the time because they are focusing on digital commerce. But majority of our population, mm -hmm. even digital office space employees, would really mm -hmm. have to be on site because we're offering experience. So the mm -hmm. sense of purpose comes in also as we try to really explain to our, our employees across generations why we report on site daily because um, it is the nature of the business and we are offering um, an on-site experience to our customers. But also we have to make sure that the employees' experiences would also be good. So the work-life integration, which Tan has mentioned a while ago, also comes into play. So uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the perspective from the retail side. Okay, in the retail side for the engagement. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, maybe I would ask the, only the two questions. The last two questions. The, this question I'm curious to is talk about the AI in the future. So uh, they ask about uh, this AI will kill the creativity and won't help to develop individual skill sets. Please share your thoughts on this. Thank you. Hmm? I think sometimes it's true, right? <laughs> yeah, because what I can see now, majority of my team, they are using the AI. Uh, two, mm -hmm. but it helps. 
uh, but uh, yeah. but at the same time there's several things that you cannot because AI can help you a lot if you but they can write the HR strategy for you right Carol and Terry I think that you experience all with this so AI can help you to write the strategy AI can help you to write the job description uh, AI can draw uh, to use the everything if you want to but at the same time that uh, they cannot take away the innovation because let an example go to the product development product development a product innovation you cannot use ai to create a new product or new offering to the customer so you can use ai as a tool to understand why the people need abcd and you still using that i think the good thing that you have to use the ai to support the unnecessary tasks that people have to put on with a lot of hands thing right and use that data to make your own decision because you are still the one that to make the decision based on what you have from ai i think that that could be a, a smart way of using ai well it's just uh, with, uh, with uh, what the tank saying that ai can put it's just a tool for you yeah. to make better decision it cannot mm. replace you to kill your innovations uh, mm. you tell them they will do it better just like you write a sentence they make mm, a daily face for you but the sentence still come from you as a human so ai cannot do innovation they also cannot, they do not have emotion. I still remember I tried the chat GPT. I said, I write a sentence. I said, okay, make this sentence more emotion. You know what they did? Same sentence, but the emotion smile. <laughs> so to him, it's an emotion, you know? So look at, hey, you know, so I caught you, you know, he cannot actually, the same sentence. I said, can you make this sentence more emotion? Same sentence with a smile emotion. So I laugh, you know? So in a way, they actually, they are very smart, but they cannot replace human. Decision making still lies in the human. We can use the analytical tools from them and they, give, they can give a lot of options, but subsequently each and every option comes with consequence. So we have to evaluate the consequence of the things that we actually leverage on the AI. I don't think they can actually replace human. They will not kill the creativity. You input, just like you put a coffee machine, you put a coffee bean, you come up with um, coffee, but different flavor of coffee, it depends on what kind of flavor that you put in the coffee. So that is a simple example. Yeah, agree with all of those. Um, it's really to um, complement uh, us as people, you know, um, AI is there to be able to allow us to do more. Um, for instance, you know, I was talking to my team that we need to use more AI to, to write JDs faster, but uh, the AI cannot really understand um, uh, all the various ways that one job connects with the other jobs in the specific context in the Philippines, in the spe specific mall and all that. So that has to be from the perspective of the of the people, of our employees, as they look at it, um, uh, not just with um, graphs, but with emotions uh, rolled into it. Uh, so AIs can generate uh, or can crunch numbers faster, but the, the reasoning there behind it and uh, really deriving the why would still lie within, you know, um, the workforce. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, unfortunately, maybe just the time of right now, but I, I want to ask, I, I have the one question for the Miss Carol Chang in this Q&A section. Uh, Ms. Carol Chang, how to handle Gen Z who prefers to work in the flexible situation? Meanwhile, uh, uh, the functioning company of the FNCG needs to the WFO. What is your strategy for the next five to 10 years? Mm -hmm. This specific, specific to Carol. Yeah, yeah, because I'm a company manufacturing and we all present. Yeah. I uh, thank you for the questions. Um, when I just read it, I paused for a while. That actually, yeah, Zenji, I also um, encountered a similar um, um, uh, situation in my current situation. That actually in manufacturing, don't say about Friday week, they sometimes work on Saturday, Sunday, you know, because of the peak season. What we do actually, we can do a shift of rotations that actually to make sure you have sufficient time for people to have a flexi uh, working hours. And you just uh, fix it, for instance, uh, I, I, I break it into small parts. For instance, that you might actually fix it from 10 to 4 p.m. Actually, it's a must to come to office. The rest is you flexi. Or you can work four days a week, but you have to arrange accordingly. 
So manufacturing a bit challenging because you run 24 hours. But what you can do, you can do a rotation. Somebody not every time off on Saturday, Sunday, you can off on Monday, Tuesday. You see how to do it. And um, the best strategy you can implement is uh, you're using six months as a trial period. This is what we do. And in manufacturing, it's difficult to have five-day week. So um, we implement five-day week is actually, we try to actually um, schedule them different rest area, different rest time and proven. Not only I, we, we increase the OEE, um, uh, OE, I think people will know operations efficiency effectiveness. We also uh, reduce the downtime of the machine. At the same time, we improve the attrition rate. Why? They have, they have rest enough, they, they take lesser MC. So all this data, you can actually, as a HR practitioner, you have two hats to wear. You have to on the employee side to actually see that what you can actually offer to them. At the same time, you have to manage the cost for the company. So with that, at this six month trial period, you have enough data to see whether your strategy is work or not. And initially it's impossible to work that way, but I feel that it's possible. It depends on how you plan your work schedule. Uh, ultimately, boil it down to discipline. Don't abuse the system. So when I implement, I talk to the people, don't abuse it. The moment you abuse it, you will not have this flexi uh, working work from home because um, ultimately it's a result cow. And if you want to actually really on the beginning, a beginning stage to actually have a really clear KPI for those work from home. If you want to work from home one week, what you're going to achieve with this one week? So when they come back, they have to actually let you know that have then actually achieve it. So with that, subsequently you build the, the culture of trust. Ultimately, actually result oriented. So um, regardless where you work, but manufacturing, you have to do some job rotation. That will actually solve your problem on uh, whether you can work from home or back here away. I hope okay. I answered the question. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing everything. So uh, unfortunately, we don't have time right now. So uh, we cannot answer the all question today. But uh, okay, that's it. So I yeah. mean, I wanted to offer that perhaps you can provide them our email address if there's some questions they can always address us. Actually, when they ask questions at the same time, also let us pause and think, how can we do better? Uh, I welcome questions that actually you send to us. Um, yeah, yes, yes. Or connect via LinkedIn. Okay, okay. <laughs> you can add LinkedIn to everyone. Or if if uh, the panelists, you put your email in, in chat, you can put the link in or email in, in chat too. Okay. Okay. Today I want to wrap up as everything. Today we talk about the how multi-generation change our workplace, right? Uh, I think the key, I I have a lot of key takeaway that I know that about the inclusive, about the sense of belonging, about the communication, about the empower. I think we would like to embrace the different to fight to balance and use the each generation stress, right? Yeah, this is not challenge, but give our the opportunity to grow too. So I think now everybody, we are on the exciting journey into the new world, the new world of the multi-generation cooperation. So let's build the workplace where everyone try together. Okay. So today, thank you all panelists today, Club, Ms. Cheryl, Ms. and Ms. Tang, and thank you our audience Club to join us today. See you thank again, you. Club. Thank you, everyone, Club. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you for organizing. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.